Okay, we got a whole mess of parts from Coons Equipment today. Uh, Cross-checked all of our lists. Uh, just kept check marking off what was in. These are the things we haven't got in yet and are still on order. Um, some bearings, different things. Uh, a bushing kit. Didn't even know I needed this. But uh, Glenn, our parts guy, he knew we needed it for this slip clutch over here. He said there's no way to get your old ones out. Excellent. I love it when they do stuff like that. Um, got this lower gear and I said well shoot they sent me a wore out one. It's got all that wear on it. And you can actually see original casting marks on it. There you go. That's a little bit better. I don't have the best camera. But uh, I looked at my old gear and said, oh, well that shot when I pulled it out, it's starting to lean one way. It's got all these wear marks on it. Getting the new factory one, Glenn said I can return this. Uh, this combine does not have a lot of hours on it. There is the, uh, the new to the old comparison. Haven't even wore through this, uh, this little lip here yet. Uh, I mean, mine has a little bit of wear, but nothing compared to that 300 table elevator uh, or uh, clean grain elevator that we did in the 300 rebuild. So uh, I'm able to return this, but uh, that's uh, that's a good sign that the uh, that the piece. And then this is the uh, the lower unit for the clean grain elevator which is in excellent shape as well. We got our slip clutch in uh, last night. Charlie went up and picked it up from Coons Equipment and we are going to reinstall this. We have to add bushings to this piece. Glenn sent us those. We didn't know we needed them. Uh, and we had this shaft built up at a machine shop we work with quite regularly. I uh, got some morning dew on it. That's why it's rusty. Uh, and we're going to work on reinstalling the cross auger return elevator shaft. Uh, we did get these flanges new. This is the flange that uh, the Fafner flange that had the wrong bearing put in it probably in a rush season or something. And we got that new from Massey as well. And I had my nephews pull the cookie pan blocks here. Uh, and we're going to take a kerth off of those. They were loose. I was getting, getting about that much play in it. Uh, if we'll take a kerth off with a table saw, that'll tighten those right up. Uh, this not shaking, uh, or this not making full rotation, just shaking back and forth. Probably wouldn't have been too critical. But we're here. We've got the butt off. You can see to do it and it doesn't take that long. We like to do the job right. All of our straw walker blocks are very tight, uh, which is a good sign. Once again, I don't believe this combine had a lot of hours. Uh, they don't move up and down when you wiggle them. Uh, I have had combines in the past where you could have up to like a quarter of an inch of play in there. And also, this combine on the block still has the cardboard spacers in there which is good and something to look for if purchasing a combine where if you have a lot of block play or a lot of block wear you can just take those cardboard spacers out and you can tighten your straw walker blocks right back up. A 550 actually has grease certs on those blocks. We've got our felt seal installed back in there. It's a little dark under here. We've got our brand new Fafner flanges. Uh, they don't say Fafner on them, but they do fit the bearing quite well. Now, we had this turned down and this bearing slides on without any trouble. So what I'm going to do is, is go back to the shop and get some Loctite and Loctite being an anaerobic sets up 
in the uh, in a lack of oxygen environment which once you put this on there's just uh, probably two or three thousandths there on that bearing uh, once I put the Loctite on it will set up and then lock it onto the shaft the reason why when you buy a bottle of Loctite it's only half full is because it would set up if the bottle was full uh, it's been a day since I uh, heat shrink this and uh, it's still a hair loose a little too loose for my liking uh, we're right there but I'm going to try and heat shrink it one more time and if that doesn't work I will install the bearing and turn it out sideways facing this way within um, probably half of an inch of this slot here and I will weld just a small tack weld you don't want any heat uh, or you don't want a lot of heat rather uh, to this outer bearing race here and then once I turn that right back in that locks that in and you can actually buy bearings with an anti-rotation tit on them but this being an Agco part uh, that's just what they sent me so I'm going to either have to do that or the heat shrinking will work okay. I've heated our uh, eccentric back there I'm going to work now on removing the final drive outer cap here uh, first things first I've got to drain the oil it's a 5 eighths of an inch drain plug and uh, it's pretty self-explanatory uh, in the manual it says uh, pull this off uh, inspect it obviously make sure you don't have any ripped off cogs or anything uh, I've never had anything like that in my experience um, uh, replace this o-ring or gasket seal they call it in the manual and then you've got this outer gasket here it goes all the way around and just as I said there was uh, in my experience never any broken cogs or anything awful lot of filings here on the drain plug not a good sign there was some water that actually had settled in the very bottom of this uh, and came out first so my hands didn't get dirty which is nice but uh, also not a good sign however the oil was not milky but it was very black normally it's always golden okay got the right hand side off everything is as it should be no cogs are missing uh, the oil was nice and clear and now I'm gonna prep this one for remounting I used this uh, red Loctite. The man at the store said that uh, once you put this on you would never get it off again, which didn't bother me a bit because uh, it was machined under a few thousandths and uh, I don't want that baby coming loose and spinning on the shaft again. Uh, I'm not a big fan of Loctite. Uh, this is the Permatex stuff. Uh, they don't carry Loctite at the uh, the store I went to and I'm also not worried about it because I can take this side loose and cut it with a uh, torch or a grinder which is what I did the last time and then I can push the other shaft out and cut it off with a torch or grinder of which I'm pretty skilled with so uh, that all being said, I'm going to let this set up and then I will put it all back together and put the new slip clutch on. You can see we have our final drive almost all the way broken down. Got our large ring gear there. Uh, as I said before, we found filings in it. Uh, kind of a shame. Uh, might put me behind on schedule a little bit, but uh, it's uh, it's what you got to deal with with an old combine uh, like I said our ring gear is in excellent shape but I found that this was rubbing the sidewall here as you can see and this bearing either had stopped and is still free it's kind of odd 
uh, but it has these little grooves wore into this outer race here. Uh, I can get this, but I bought that 550 to use parts off of, and our major problem is this pinion gear here. Uh, just in my experience working with metal, uh, I would say this machine, or this piece rather, uh, had some porosity problems when they cast it. Uh, you can see every one of these little teeth as you rotate it around. Uh, probably had a nice finish on it from the factory, but uh, that's what you run into when you're pouring steel uh, of this magnitude and size. And then we lost this cog almost entirely. Um, but I uh, probably our 550, which is back there, won't have any problems in it. Uh, if not, we can always just pull the other side. Uh, this wasn't hard to pull. Uh, this took me about uh, 10 minutes to get this broken down this far. Uh, basically just the same as a, uh, as a wheel bearing assembly. That slides on. Of course it's stuck now. That slides on back there. And then you have an outer bearing that goes in here. And, uh, and then a castle nut and a cotter pin. You obviously don't want it overly tight. Uh, this was an inch and a half, and I just had to get the wrench out and just put it on it just to break it free. It wasn't very tight at all. And uh, so that's where we're at today. These are all the components that I would have put in new if I was going to go that route. Uh, that pinion gear, which is the very top one, the 11 tooth pinion gear, uh, is $250 by itself and for all the bearings and other things I would need uh, I was going to have to spend $578.50. Uh, so I decided that uh, that we're going to uh, rob it out of the 550. Uh, we bought it to use, we only have 500 in it, so right there it's already paid for itself. Even if we have to take both pieces off, like I said, it only took me about 10 minutes to get that down that far. All right, out here on the parts machine, uh, it literally took me longer to gather up the tools to do this than actually get it pulled, uh, about 15 minutes to uh, get our pinion shaft and gear. Uh, I'm actually going to use this face plate because it's bearing uh, race here, this outer race, doesn't have any wear on it. And I'll show you the pinion here. It's a little dirty from my gloves. Uh, our splines do have a little wear, but they will run. Uh, and there is some if I can see it here, I believe that that is wear from the gear actually itself. Uh, this being just basically a wheel bearing assembly uh, probably has some play in it this way and so it probably doesn't mesh exactly perfect on the uh, the ring gear and pinion gear so it's probably wearing this back side more and that's where we're getting that uh, those wear marks from. I'm actually going to rob the bearings off of this parts combine. They seem just to be a little tighter and uh, also its faceplate doesn't have that wear mark like the other one and these just slide on and off. Of course I can't get it one handed. There we go. And. Uh, this will be able to keep this combine rolling. I'm also going to slide the uh, wore out pinion in, uh, in this one as well. All right, the camera died on me, so I just wanted to do a quick overview in case it didn't capture it. Uh, I reinstalled the, um, the pinion gear, reinstalled the original ring gear. I stole the pinion gear from this parts combine changed the bearings because those seem just a little bit looser than these two. Uh, I'll clean these thoroughly. Uh, they say do not pack them because they run in oil. And I'm going to switch this face plate here. I put the old seal back in. Uh, this one won't have any oil in it but that should keep it sealed up a little better in case I needed a ring gear ever. Um, and this one has wear marks on this race like the bearing had stopped or seized it was kind of odd and this one is like new so 
I'm gonna bolt this all back together and I think I'm gonna use that set of ricers from a 510 we bought years ago uh, to put on here and then my big my big ones that are yellow will still stay inside just because they're a pretty nice set of tires but we're going to use this set mission accomplished uh, reinstalled the old hub here from the 510 uh, used the old uh, gasket here and reinstalled the old felt and gasket seal and uh, bolted this back on everything went uh, swimmingly and took me about uh, 45 minutes or so all together including pulling the tire and everything uh, so that's almost uh, it was going to cost $500 for that pinion that pinion gear those two bearings and these two bearings and I will get this uh, this gasket here new but uh, that's about 500 an hour that's not too bad working on an old combine okay interesting thing about this spline shaft since I took it off of the opposing side you can see where these splines have wear on them I'd say they're maybe 50% war, maybe a little more than that. Since I took this off of the opposing side, this slides in this way, which makes it back to brand new cogs on every one of those splines. Uh, obviously they won't last forever, but for the little amount of acres that we do, uh, that'll probably never wear out. And if it does, I've got the uh, reverse side just sitting out there. Okay, progressing on this final drive, I uh, got this all reinstalled somewhat. Uh, these kind of have to slide in in sequence together uh, to make the meshing correct and then it slides on to the rear bearing, the rear inner bearing. This outer one, I believe I said in a previous video that they run in oil. In the book it says to pack this one with grease. Uh, which is the outer one here. Oil obviously couldn't get that to that. So we're going to pack this with grease and then reinstall everything and start sealing it up. I have on order, I have the uh, that gasket right there that goes on that hub cap uh, on order and then this is the plate that we borrowed from the 550. Just a bit of a common sense mechanic uh, this seal, this little felt seal, uh, is not completely uh, symmetrical all the way around, obviously. Uh, so instead of putting my seam down here at the bottom where it's going to run in oil constantly, I'm going to put it up at the top. We're as far as we can go on this without having this gasket here. So I've got my felt seal in made an excellent seal all the way to the top. I had to cut about an inch off. Uh, I waited to do this until I had uh, like 98% of it packed in there. That way you don't make any mistakes. Here's the joint right there, uh, which will be up on the top. Got our gasket on, came new, and uh, came in these packages here. So now we are ready to uh, put this back on, and it says all of these bolts are supposed to be torqued at uh, 55 to 60 foot-pounds. In the manual it talks about greasing this with a thin layer, a little dab will do you, so that you do not fold this seal under when you slide it on.